Hey guys, Soth here with a new weapon showcase. This time we're delving into the world of Arma 3 assault rifles and we're going to get into a controversial one. Today we're going to be talking about the AK-12. I'm going to get into some of the real life history of the weapon as well as discuss why I believe it to be one of the best and most well-rounded assault rifles in Arma 3. Now, before we hop into the history of this weapon, I have to say, I am not going to do the full history of the AK. I will talk about it a bit, but I'm not going to do the whole history of the Kalashnikov rifle. That would take an entire video on its own. I want to concentrate on the AK-12 and its variants specifically. AK enthusiasts may get another video later on down the line. Okay, so basic history of the AK goes something like this. In 1947, a Russian tank technician named Mikhail Kalishnikov was a World War II veteran. He saw firsthand what the German STG-44, or MP-44 as some called it, could do, and this was the inspiration for a weapon he called the Avtomat Kalishnikova. This quickly became the most used and manufactured rifle in existence. Many, many, many variants of it were made, hundreds in fact, and maybe a lot more if you count guns that use AK parts such as receivers and so on. This rifle is so popular, it is literally on the flag of countries. Can you imagine if the American flag had an AR-15 on it? It's crazy, right? Anyway, AKs are largely credited with being the deadliest weapon, well, ever. It is the king of the modern battlefield in a lot of respects, and it's gone through a lot of changes along the way. It has taken 545, 762, and 556 rounds. It even has shotguns that use its receivers. The reason the AK is so deadly in its most common 762 form is ballistics. Without getting too far into the science of things, the AK round is much deadlier in terms of raw killing power than, say, a 556. Certain 762 rounds are even against the Geneva Convention for this very reason. So when they hit a person, they will almost always completely incapacitate that person or just outright kill them. Whereas a 556 round, for example, is a more wounding round. Wounding can take more soldiers off the battlefield in an immediate sense because they have to carry their hurt buddy away. One thing I always talk about in these videos is the cost of the round. And well, despite it being one of the most common guns in the world, believe it or not, the ammunition is much less common. It's not that they're not making it or anything, and there's definitely a lot of it. It's just not as mass produced as some of the other ammo types such as 22 lr or 9mm. The AK is definitely not going to be your zombie apocalypse gun unless you live in Russia or Africa or the Middle East or some place where the rifle is more common. But cost-wise, it's actually pretty cheap to shoot an AK. 100 round boxes are only going for like 25 bucks. That's super cheap cost per round at a quarter a round. And it's relatively on par with things that are 5.56. Five, but enough about all that. Let's talk about the real AK-12. Manufactured by Kalishnikov Concern, formerly Izmash. This weapon is currently being evaluated by the Russian military for full production and use by the Russian army. This weapon system is particularly interesting because lighter versions of it can switch calibers with the swapping of barrels. It has a modern rail system, and that's something that previous AKs didn't have. And it also can have an underbarrel grenade launcher. That's something that previous versions of the AK did have. It was at first rejected by the Russian government citing a range of defects, but nobody ever went into specifics about what those defects were. They just said no to the AK-12. But they renewed their interest in it once those bugs were worked out. Now, on to the Arma version of the gun. The AK-12 for me is far and away the best AR in the game, even after it's been nerfed. The Type 115 is the next one down for me, and then it goes to the MX-3GL. Before playing King of the Hill, I hadn't really bought into the assault rifle craze. I didn't need to. I just used the SPMG for everything. I am quickly learning the error of my ways. The rate of fire coupled with the extremely tight grouping and burst has me completely sold on this weapon. The underbarrel launcher is pretty much the same as all the other ARs, but the power of the round combined with the rate of fire put this thing way over the top of the others for me. For close combat and mid-range out to 500 meters, it cannot be beat and putting a silencer and a bipod on it makes it disgusting. It's important to talk about the nerfs here, and I really think that they weren't all that big of a deal. The round is much slower because they put air friction on it, and it has less penetration than it used to. Doesn't quite go through buildings like the way it did, but it's still more than a 6.5, and it's noticeably different switching between those two calibers. You're only going to have issues against very heavy chest rigs in some mods. 
And some people are going to be like, okay, Sloth, this is well and good, but I don't have Apex. I can't use this gun. And I feel you. My advice is to just use the MX3GL. The three round grenade launcher puts that thing in basically its own category. And you should definitely give it a shot if, you ha if it's something that you haven't been using already. Let's get into some clips showing off the versatility and sheer power of this gun. I hope you enjoyed this video and left with more knowledge than you came into it with, which is the whole goal here, right? Which assault rifle is your favorite? Let me know in the comments and we can talk about it. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like. More people see this video if you do so, so it really helps me out. I hope you enjoy the clips and we'll see you in the next weapon showcase. Uh, it's right here below.
guys in town, time we've got an enemy. Lower floor. 